Today's guest on Drummer Nation is Mike Meadows. Mike is a native Atlantan who now makes his home in Austin, Texas. We're going to talk to him about all manner of things that he's involved in. And welcome to the show. Hey, great to be here. Always a pleasure to see you. Definitely. Now, you're from Atlanta, but you make your home in Austin. That is correct. What moved you there? I'm thinking it's either a girl or a gig. <laughs> no, I actually, I moved to Austin uh, at a time I was, I was living in Boston. I had uh, spent some time at Berklee College of Music, and I was tired of the cold weather. I needed to find some place in a more southern climate. And that actually had a music scene. Uh, yeah, and, and that I enjoyed coming home to because mm -hmm. I was on the road so much. I wanted to find a place that just really felt comfortable to me. And Austin was great, so I, I moved there. And the, you know, the airport there is super convenient. It's real small, but it's easy to get to either coast. And your, your time difference isn't that big as far as jet lag and stuff like that goes. Mm -hmm. You know, little things that you think about. <laughs> the logistics that can be yeah. so important. But how about the music scene itself? What have you found there? So the music scene there is, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty vibrant. You have South by Southwest and Austin City Limits Festival, as well as the Austin City Limits taping there. Mm -hmm. C3 events is based there. So there's a lot of music happening in Austin, but everything also comes through Austin. So there's a lot of different influences. You don't see as much uh, jazz, perhaps, but there is a lot of, uh, you know, the songwriter stuff, backbeat music, I would call it, um, electronic stuff, uh, healthy Latin scene. There's some, some Afropop things happening around town, too. I think of it as having a lot of singer-songwriter activity there. Certainly, yeah. They, you know, and it has a rich history of, of songwriters, too. Mm -hmm. um, people like Towns Van Zant that mm -hmm. were really instrumental in the scene. Um, the Flatlanders kind of all came down from Lubbock and really made their name in Austin. That's Jimmy Dale Gilmore, Joe Ely, and Butch Hancock. And they were big influences on a lot of people. You also have uh, Janis Joplin, who was from Austin. You know, there, there, mm -hmm. Stevie Ray Vaughan. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a lot so of a rich stuff. legacy of music from Austin that's Definitely. led to the scene today. You do a lot of work with singer songwriters using some sort of hybrid sort of kit. Certainly, yeah, I, I do a lot of that, and it's something that I've become known for that a lot of people have hired me for. Uh, Hayes Carl, who I tour with regularly. Um, when we do a trio format, I have a hybrid drum and percussion kit with him. Mm -hmm. I'm actually now also playing some, some keyboards as well. well. Let's talk about that. I think of hybrid kits in two formats. One would be normal drum set pieces mixed with disparate percussion instruments from various parts of the world. Or normal drum set instruments mixed with electronics. And you do all of the above, right? Correct, yes. and. Uh, for me, initially it started as, as bringing in the, the different world percussion influences and adding those into a drum kit to, to create different textures, because I've always loved all these different sounds around mm -hmm. the world mm -hmm. and wanted to put that in to support good songs, essentially. Mm -hmm. also been into, gosh, since I was in high school, I, I had an Alesis D4, and I had some LP spikes, and I would put those up on my drum kit and trigger mm -hmm. different sounds with mm -hmm. those. And that's proving helpful in the studio and live? Right, work. so yeah, so now I, I use both of those things depending on the gigs. Uh, for example, this band Opep from Melbourne, Australia that, that I've been touring with. With them, I use a, a Roland SPD-SX, and I'm sampling tracks and phrases, sometimes just individual sounds, but blending all of that with the drums and then also playing percussion. So sometimes I might be playing a tambourine in one hand, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. and then triggering stuff while playing a groove and singing backgrounds. <laughs> you know? Doing it all. That's an interesting <laughs> movement in percussion in the last 10 years, I'd say, or so. It dates back more than that. It it's coming into its own now, the whole hybrid thing. Certainly. Now, you, uh, I know you had a chance to record with uh, Chris Christopherson. Yes. How'd that come about? Well, uh, I'm friends with Chris's manager, so she originally reached out to me and they wanted to do some recordings. He got his rights back to all these classic songs of his, Sunday Morning Coming Down, Me and Bobby McGee, Help Me Make It Through the Night, that both he and other people had you know, massive hits with, a mm -hmm. lot of number ones. And, and he wrote. And that he wrote. <clears throat> and so he, uh, he's getting older and he's, he's you know, it's been publicized that he has dementia, and so they wanted to go and try to capture some of these songs in uh, a live, really sort of uh, organic format before he's not able to be in the studio anymore. So it may well have been his last album? Uh, quite possibly, yeah. Hope not. But yeah. Uh, in any event, it's something you'll remember your whole life. Definitely, yeah, and we we did you know somewhere between twenty and thirty songs with him, so it was it was pretty amazing, and Cheryl Crow came in and did a duet with him as well, which was it was fun, you know. I'll bet. Yeah. Hanging with August Company. <laughs> Speaking of companies, you have a company, Swan Percussion. You're a partner in. Yes. And they make many of these different types of instruments too. Tell us about them. Yeah, Swan Percussion started uh, 2009. My friend Eric Holland and I created this drum, the Black Swan, that was initially, I just wanted one for myself, but I had a bunch of friends who were really interested in it. So we got the patents and the trademarks and started a company. That started to get some buzz. So got quite a lot of buzz. Yeah, yeah, it really kind of took off, which was cool. And then from that, I had a lot of other ideas. So we started designing different cajones and shakers and other sort of hybrid instruments that were really just designs that from my experience on the road and in, in the studio were things that I wanted to see exist mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. weren't currently on the marketplace. And hybrid in the sense that you may have bongos made of wood. Correct. Without a head. Yeah. Uh, Non-traditional but very interesting instruments. Um, what's next for you? Uh, got a lot of touring coming up. Um, a lot of studio work whenever I'm not touring. I'm getting ready to do another sample pack of different sounds from things that I've collected around the world in Africa and, and other places. Well, we should mention you have a sample pack uh, that was released several months ago uh, for F Expansion as an, as a, an add on library uh, for the Swan instruments with instrument samples and groove samples and some of the crescent symbols. Uh, it's doing very well. So you're, you, you've got your, your feet in, a, in, in all worlds of the electronic, hybrid, drumming, African, global beat, um, all manner of things. Yeah, it Keeps fun. a man working, doesn't it? <laughs> it keeps me out of trouble, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for coming by. You're welcome anytime. And, uh, Certainly. Keep us in the loop with what's up. Awesome. Always a pleasure. Same here. <laughs>